Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting, council meeting for August 16, 2021. Yes, Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Bridge, administrators, deputy, council, and our citizens. Um, Mr. Bridge, you will be the third again. Yes. I take it? Yes, I will. And you do an excellent job, and we appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate it. Nice comment. <laughs> Can we get him a wig? <laughs> I would love one, so sign me up for that. <laughs> you don't need me about that. If you would call all, please, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Cobb? Here. Councilman Rokerall? Here. Vice Mayor Cook? Here. Mayor Lowry? Here. Councilman Grimm? I'm here. Councilwoman Eagleson? Here. And Councilwoman Nowakowski? Here. We have seven members present. Thank you very much, sir. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. If you will, please bow your head. Our Heavenly Father, Please bless us as we attempt to do the business for the citizens of this great city. Please protect all of our first responders, our deputies, our fire, EMS. Also, if you can, see what we can do in order to keep this pandemic under control. With that, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, moving on, we'll need action on the uh, work session minutes for uh, August 2nd, 2021. So moved. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor. Kurt, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion, Council? And when you're ready, Mr. Bridge. Um, my, uh, by, uh, Mayor Lowry. Yes. I think. You confused Thanks me. Two of us. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? I'm trying to think, was I still in the meeting? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For the work session you were. Yes. 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 <laughs> Councilman Rodewall? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleson? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Uh, minutes are approved 7 to 0. Thank you. And moving on to the acceptance of the uh, regular council meeting minutes for uh, August 2nd, 2021. So, so moved. Second. Uh, we'll go with Vice Mayor the motion and second by Ms. Eagleson. Any discussion, Council? When you're ready, Mr. Bridge. Awesome. Um, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Sustained on the second home. Okay. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Um, six, zero to one, the minutes patch. Patch. You need, you need some Mountain Dew? No, I just got to get this one right now. Okay. <laughs> I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. And moving on, well, back to Mr. Bridge for the city manager's report. Oh. What do you got to do? Communication? Oh, yes. Communication. I'm sorry. I skipped one. Mr. Vice Mayor, I'm sorry. I have a thank you from Tara Harness for the proclamation, and I will read to the city of Nicolau. Thank you for coming to my graduation party. I will forever cherish the proclamation you presented me. I have loved growing up in our small town. Thank you for making me feel special. Love, Tara Harness. You're very nice. It was a nice event. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And then moving on to Mr. Bridge. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members in the public. Um, we'll start with the city manager report, and we'll have our police report uh, by Deputy Dunn. Uh, the New Carlisle deputies for the month of July were dispatched to 141 calls for service. Of those 141 calls, uh, miles patrolled for the month of July was 4,543. Uh, calls that were taken, uh, 141 as I stated earlier. Reports that were taken in July were 34. Uh, assists were 51. Criminal arrests were 16, of those 16 arrests, seven of them were felony arrests, eight of them were misdemeanor arrests, and then four women arrests. Uh, deputies in New Carlisle with 51 traffic stops, with 34 of them being warnings, 16 of them being citations. Uh, there was 164 business checks for the month of July, and uh, 247 citizen contacts. Thank you. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Garman, Deputy Garman? Uh, thank you for the report, uh, Deputy Garman. How's your, uh, just how things going? Vehicle running all right? Yeah, Citizen cool. ball doing well? Yeah, going good. Anything exciting going on? Anything bad? Just from last week, with Deputy no. Duffy had. <laughs> okay. Wait, which? The, Guy that was on 235. Oh, no. okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good thing we got extra poles over, right? <laughs> Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, uh, Deputy Garvin. Moving on with this uh, city manager report, our finding that report. I think you had to go on a run. Yeah, so I'll just read his front page real quick. Uh, in the month of July, uh, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 87 EMS calls in the city and 26 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to nine fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. That seems a little high for them. <coughs> um, we have four EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Park, due to Medic 52 being on the response. Uh, we answered three mutual aid EMS calls to Pike Township and four for Bethel Park. And says we have hired three new firefighters and uh, slash EMT. They will start their training this month. So any questions on that, I will be happy to come to the fire chief and we'll get back to you. So any questions? Thanks, sir. Awesome. <coughs> Moving on to the city manager report, our finance uh, report with uh, Ms. Harris, our finance director. So here's yours, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Bridge, Mayor Council, and members of the public. This will be your July revenue and expense report. Um, I wanted to start up with our estimated resources since we did have an adjustment. Our beginning budget, what we estimated in receiving uh, for the year, was originally $5,931,374. We did receive in the month of July the American Rescue Fund, and that was $291,626.95. So now we're estimating to receive for the year's budget $6,273,095. Going down to the actual report of revenue received, for the month of July, we received $946,061.99. That includes that 291, and that's why that number is very large. Next month we should get our real estate uh, second half, so that'll be another large number. So our revenue that we actually received to date as of the end of July is $5,283,854.16. And I did a little percentage. We also um, should be about 58% on track for the end of July of our revenue, and we have received 67% of that extra amount breaking our revenue up. Over on the expense side, then we have just for the actual expenses paid, month of July, $624,080.95. We should be about 58% of our budget spent, and we are coming in a little less at 55%. The uh, statement of cash is below, and the bank statements. And if there's any questions, I can retain those. Can you go over the tax income tax? The income tax for the letter from Vicki? Yes. 
So our, how could we do that? Yeah, yeah no, it's going to be known. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, it's out there. <laughs> so Vicki Taylor, uh, with our tax administrator, is updating us on um, the income tax collection and what our, the company CCA that we subcontract out for our tax collection efforts and where they are. Mm -hmm. So they have sent out 204 letters to residents um, in July that have not filed a tax return for the Canadian Nicolau. They will be following up for collections for anyone who then does not still uh, file their income tax. So they are now being able to use the federal tax listing to be able to go back and track and they have not had the manpower or the code at the time. So they are putting in some good efforts right now to work on. So we should start seeing some more increase in our income tax. On the report as to where we are that she gives us monthly, we are still up for the month of July about 32%, but total for the year we're up 14.61% in our income tax collections. So that is good based on comparing from last year. Council, any questions for Ms. Taylor? What kind of abacus do you use? Kind of what? Abacus. On the percentage? No. No, no, no. no. On the, on the revenue. No, it was, it was just, never mind. It was a, <laughs> I was do I? I know. I tried to light these up some, and it just, it, 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 it just fell. I, I, I laughed. I, it I, fell I, flat. I, you know. I'm sorry. I'll try I, harder I, next I, time. I, I, we're laughing on the inside. At me. <laughs> at me, not yeah. the joke. Yeah. Do we need a motion to accept or try knock knock joke? That's right. We'll do knock knock joke. Right. 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 So it. yes, we will need a motion to accept Mrs. Don't Pitts. move. <laughs> motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by I think Ms. Eggleston. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. All right, we got a motion first uh, by Vice Mayor Cook, second by Councilman Eggleston. So Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Nokowski. Yes. Uh, Councilman Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Um, Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Uh, 7 to 0, the finance report is approved. Thank you, Ms. Harris, for an awesome report. We appreciate that. Yes, thank yes. you very much. Thank you. And it is great news that we're at 14.61% on our income tax plus. Yes. It's also even great news CCA is now cross check and fill the database. And they had, just so everyone knows, COVID put a wrinkle in that a little bit. But they had to get a lot of years of data first before they could do that. Mm -hmm. So the first couple of years we saw them collecting data. Last year I wanted them to start it earlier. They couldn't because of COVID, but now we see them in action. So I'm excited to see what that relays into additional income tax collections. All right, so moving on, um, we have our service report with uh, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, oh, Mayor, sorry. members of council, yeah. and members of uh, the public. Real quick, it's not a couple things, uh, but when I finished the report on Wednesday, it came up. Uh, decorative light poles did come in Thursday. So we're trying to get scheduled to get the original two at 129 North Main and get the one at uh, CVS. Well, the first one that CVS put up, uh, we will be removing the flagpole um, base out of there. And then we do have two spares. One will obviously now take the place of the one that got damaged from the high speed chase. Um, as soon as I get the police report, then I'll be filing a claim, regardless if this whoever has insurance or whatever. So at least we'll get a head start on getting another full um, order for that purpose. So we'll have another spare. So hopefully we can, you know, keep a couple of these up. Um, under Public Works Department, we do have three catch basins that did get repaired on Main Street. Um, we did get Aramark to give us a pricing on doing some of the spots. We are trying to get them in before. Uh, the festival comes in not it's not for the festival but trying to get the painting done because once we start doing uh, a few other activities I think closer to the end of the year the painting is just going to get tough everybody likes to get a lot of this stuff done at the end of the year so with that being said it might be before that but it might be after hopefully um, we can get that done uh, dirt patching was to resume it immediately after catch basin repair however it is going to start on Monday because I do have some alley work that really needs work um, I have the crews instead installing a story walk. Uh, we have 26 poles to install on the bike path. 
with a grand opening, I believe, coming up. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we stayed ahead of the game. It did allow us a week. And they're calling for bad weather this week. So just when it rains, it does pour for us. As far as scheduling, um, <coughs> we will be able to get back on Adam Street Tower. We did get an update. We had to do a complete shutdown of Clay Street this past week for some valve replacement. And those were valve insertions that we had done um, a couple weeks prior. That went without a hitch. It was scheduled. So with, do, uh, with EPA guidelines, all we had to do was a, sim a, sim uh, a simple oil advisory. So we had them off on Thursday, and we were able to lift the oil advisory on Saturday. So we didn't wait. We brought people in once the test came back good. Um, while we're in the water department, just and I'll let you um, know that I'll have an additional item that we're, I'll be talking about with the estimate that's also in your packet, but I'll come, I'll come back to that afterwards. In the sewer department, uh, I'm currently waiting on an engineering agreement to start the secondary clarifiers number one and two with some American Rescue Plan funds, and which will have a minimal local wastewater funds uh, attached to it. The estimate is 295,000 of those federal, and we're estimating about $10,000 in local um, match for that project. Um, those, we have a feeling are gonna be sometime around next spring, late spring when they go in. It's an average 36 week build time once you have uh, the specs out and get pricing. So. Uh, they're being hit like everybody else, so hopefully we can keep, you know, we keep up on our maintenance and they'll be ready for those two for repair for in the spring. I also did apply for an Ohio Public Works Commission grant to pay for 50% of primary number two clarifier with matching funds coming from the American Rescue Plan. And all but it's about 99 cent approved. I had the second highest score. I should say I, the city, I had the second highest score. Uh, for this project, only beaten out by one Clark County project. And uh, so we are pretty much going to get funded. We have an integrating committee meeting uh, towards the late September. That will be the official notice, and then I can come back to council with an official approval for that. Um, and then we are meeting next week with an engineering firm to discuss future major plan upgrades. As I said, we still use gaseous fluorine and a few other items. and. You know, we're kind of looking for the future to change that technology and kind of get rid of that hazardous material that we've been using since the 70s, but it'd be nice to get rid of it. So under uh, 2021 road reconstruction, uh, that is uh, scheduled. Let me make sure I got the two right. Fenwick phase one is going to be starting right around September uh, to be reconstructing all of Fenwick from Scott Street to Kennison. And then the Clark County Engineer uh, resurfacing project, which includes um, Deerfield, South Scott, Cambridge Court, Sunset, is uh, slated to start about the same time near Labor Day weekend. The, we did apply or are going to a meeting for um, CDBG in a, in a week, I think, or so, for Fenwick Phase 2 to apply for a critical infrastructure grant to get that phase done. So we may be able to go back to back years with a big project. Uh, we haven't had been able to do that in probably five, six years, so that'll be nice. And then, um, moving down, Madison Street School has been um, kind of stalled for about a week. Um, before he uh, stopped last week, they're having a problem getting driver vacation, time off, things like that. So they're still, still well, well within their contract time. Um, to get that removed. Um, we did have an estimated uh, additional asbestos come in that was not found in the original, about $8,000 worth. However, that is still covered under the uh, CDBG funds that we received for that. Uh, we still have a chance of getting our city share re uh, reduced um, from 52000 And then moving down, uh, so the state with the Ohio, is partnering with the EPA and the Ohio Department of Development has gotten 250 million for water and wastewater, it includes stormwater uh, grant program. You can. Uh, this is, if you guys read the city manager part, he's discussing the water and wastewater. Mm -hmm. If you want to access your file by tax, that way it's done. It's done. It's done. So I received a preliminary engineer's estimate to take basically the old section town, anything between Lake and uh, Jefferson and Church and Clay. That area still has lead goosenecks, uh, which they still consider a full lead service line, and the old valves in that section are lead packed. So 
I uh, talked to Mr. Bridge, and we wanted to discuss just uh, briefly tonight that the estimated project cost me about $2.4 million to remove all the water mains, all the service lines, give them plastic, all update, all new hydrants um, in that old section. As you would see the aerial photo down there, when you get to it, the highlighted green. That will bring everything up to a six inch instead of a four inch. Um, I have to take this application, submit it to the Clark County engineer. Each county can submit 10 projects and then their rate on a priority scale. So there could be a higher priority than me, I don't know. I don't know how he's gonna score, we're just gonna fight for what we can get. Then, then these will go up to the Ohio Department of Development. They will look at these based on median household income. We meet that, we, we are a, a poverty area by those guidelines. Unemployment rate, we are higher than the statewide average. So we do get some bonus points for those. And then um, they say it's about 45 days till they know if uh, we will be approved. We have up until 2024 to get the project completed. The caveat to this whole thing is you have to apply for construction or engineering. We're applying for construction because obviously that's the expensive part of it. Engineering, we estimate uh, to be about $250,000. So we kind of have to make it a commitment is the 2.5 million um, with, and that has contingency built into it. Who knows what prices of materials will be by on this next year. To be able to come up with 250,000 to get all the lead out of the rest of the service in our city area and upgrade these mains and put fully hydrogenated, uh, full size hydrants throughout the old section of town. Yes, it will have all the cutouts and we'll have to come back at a later time and mill and fill those streets. So there will be about 160 cuts, asphalt strips going through that area. The good thing, it won't be on a main drive. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing. So we will have to uh, look at some asphalt repair when we do this countywide resurfacing to do a, a you know maybe a, a slight mill and come back and go ahead and do an overlay on those uh, shortly afterwards. But the, the goal is to get the lead out. So I just want to discuss about how council feels and you know where could, could we use uh, two hundred fifty thousand? Where can we get it from? Do we have any uh, questions, comments, concerns? I know it's right on you, but. Uh, we just got the information and they're like, get it in now. And we are competing with everybody and anybody. Columbus, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Southeastern Ohio, you name it, we're competing. So there's no guarantee for this. It's just, we have, when I submit, I need a, a kind of a commitment that we're going to go ahead and take care of some engineering. We'll just go down the line, Mr. Cotton. I don't know how to address this, but it may not be in this but do we want to look at bringing back the surcharge on the trash well that would have to be done at the next contract so i mean that would be discussion for a later date for sure well i mean that'll help cover some of the cost of the street repair yeah i mean it's a drop in the bucket i think if i remember that 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 fee brings in i was thinking somewhere in the mid or high teens wasn't it Seven. Oh, it was about how I thought it was about 19,000. Okay. A year? Years. We had it for a while. Yeah. And then it was not under my watch being filtered into a fund that was not supposed to go into. And then with this last contract cycle. Yeah, is it this one? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. this one. This one exactly. did. Council wanted to take that piece out. Because what happens is it raises the price on the understand. Let it go. Just should have been your mark for road. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean it's definitely something that can be talked about once that time rolls around. The next contract, I'm just kind of, I mean, I'll have to bring Well, it I mean, I, I think we ought to. I won't be here though, but I think we need to, or you all need to look at bringing that back in, because, like I say, your streets are deteriorating, and this will help. Yeah. Well, the good thing on, on this is if you were, if we were to get lucky enough to go through, we're slowly, I mean, not only slowly, because you guys have done an excellent job of getting streets repaired, and it's, I mean, a phenomenal rating, I think, but we're slowly working to this side of town anyway, so hopefully it won't be setting along with those types of patches mm -hmm. if we were to get it, so. Um, and Mr. Keiko, this is the only part of town that still has lead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, I mean, if anyone follows the news, you can look at flat and mm -hmm other areas and see what lead lead pipes do to um, especially the youth long term mm -hmm. so I, 
I personally think it's a no-brainer myself. And we're not committing. I mean, you know, if we don't get it, then we don't we don't get it. But right. we need to make sure that you know we, we have our all of our ducks in line in case we do get lucky enough to get that and be able to, to upgrade those pipes. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, I can tell you though, just not to scare anybody, we do corrosion control, not for lead. However, it does. We don't have uh, really issues with lead, but it's in the system, so someday you can. Good. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Edwin? No, sir. Mr. Lawson, anything? No, the only thing I think that with increasing the size of the mains, we definitely would be helping our fire situation mm -hmm. in that older section of town with the possibility of additional water supply. And I, I'm like Mr. Rodewall, I think this is a no brainer. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's another selling point for the Madison School property. You know, we have a good kind of a developer or something, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Would that have any impact on our ratings for our fire department if we have more water flow on the big section of the town? The uh, ISO rating. ISO we, we rating. Enough with ours. This would just help this area because we can line enough, uh, lay enough line to get some of these areas from the outline. But it would be nice to have some full five and a quarter inch mm -hmm. barrels down there, not too too. Two inches that are that actually that that will help on the entrance from the homeowner by dropping that ISO. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think if uh, we were to get lucky, I mean, if you guys want to start however you want to do it, just start looking at where you would get the, the you know, our share of the project. I, I I would support it completely. I think it's I mean again no brainer. <coughs> And when council gets done going through the we'll have Ms. Harris speak up on that too, especially about mm -hmm. the 250. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I know it's not a small chunk of change, but I think it's probably doable. I mean, pinch a few pennies here and there. And, and they apparently just got one week of vacation from city staff. Yeah, you know, I think about it more like sled. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I'll drink it. Yeah, I'll drink it. Good. Well, if we can get help with it, it'd be kind of silly to say no. Yeah. You were talking about the green highlighted area, correct? Yes. What about the red line? Uh, the red lines are already six. The new guidelines are six inch minimum for fire flows to get around that thousand gallon per minute. And they're already there. They're showing what we would tie into. Okay. So this, that center area would end up being looped. You wouldn't just have water coming from one direction. It would flow all throughout. Thank you. Um, do we have that same problem with the water lines south of Jefferson? Not that I'm aware of. We have not found, like Main Street, someone back in, I'm going to go the 50s when they did water lines, because we just had one dug up five years ago, did not have lead on it. Okay. Um, now they may stop an old galvanized, but we re if we were to replace all these, and we're going all the way to the curb, to the when the private residence starts, We'll have good flow. They'll just have to replace their service line if they want to see that increased household pressure and flow. Okay. Yeah, that's it. There's no Yep. Fine. All right. There you go. And I'm not saying, we're, sorry, I'm not saying there's nothing hidden in Madison, but we are unaware by plans, by things that we've read, that there is nothing down there, but you never know. Yeah. But plans have not been exactly accurate in the past. They, they have not been. Okay. So we were talking about the benefit, such a great benefit for it, and the water fund still is struggling to, it wouldn't be able to take right. all that at once. So probably will be a general fund transfer into the water fund like we did the maintenance so much per year to pay back is what one of the like we're doing on the water tower. Mm -hmm. So the, the general fund is, has grown and, and is good, and we don't want to overcommit it, but um, it sure would be, we wouldn't want to lose an opportunity. Okay. And 20, you correct me on the date, in 2026, I think that the massive loan after the water department will fall off. And that's 226, 216. 2026? 2026, I do believe it is. December of 2026 is the last payment. Mm -hmm. nice. And that's going to free up a lot of funds for that. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay, so before we move on, um, it sounds like council is in favor of, of applying for the grant and see what we get out of it. Um, so I am going to request a motion. If we do get a, get approved, we're going to have the council support to get the 250 somewhere, just so we're all on the same page. Do you want a motion to do so? Yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. second. <laughs> motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Mr. Eggleston. Grimm? Yeah, Grimm, Eggleston. Okay. And that was a motion to find the money. Yep. Find the money. Or win the water. I heard there's an ash under Mr. Grimm's backyard. Okay. <laughs> so we got the first by Councilman Grimm, second one by right, Councilwoman Eggleston. Correct. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just go to the line here. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Yes. Councilman Cobb? Thank you. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. <laughs> so what is it? Okay. Never I knew that. I heard something. Good luck to you. Yes. Did you have, um, would you finish, Mr. Kipton, sir? Let me double check. Thank you for that. Let's see. I believe so. I can entertain any questions, so. I know you're spread all over and going 90 different directions. I know you mentioned, well, actually, I got a couple. Let me just go over. Okay, so um, I think this was in Randy's. Uh, city manager report of things you guys have been talking about. I don't know where you guys are at. And I know that we've talked about Main Street. The state will do Main Street. We started this thing in 20... It should be July of 2023. Okay, 23. So what, are, are you... Or the, or are we looking at doing any work on curbs before that is done? We, we have talked. We're trying to find some money to do a little bit of curb work. Um, and also, we're going to be doing some 88 ramps, I believe. Okay, so... The, what we came to council with two months ago was the $2 million line item for the state of Ohio budget that we were going to look at the doing the third law in church. That did not go through. That did not get passed. So we're kind of back at our start with that. Um, but we are, know it's, it's important to us, important to council, we are looking at ways, of course, it is money restricted. Um, so we'll, we're still working on things. I don't want to tell you some of the things we're doing because I don't know if they fully make sense yet to us, but yet when we have a solid plan, we'll definitely go. But that funding pot that we were going to use is now on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other, when the city, when you guys start your, uh, your streets, um, you know, the ones that you just went off. For the county resurfacing? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I can get it out. Would that be an optimal time for you guys to look at getting this work done out here since they're going to be out here? I mean, would it save you money doing it at that time? I, I have a message in to Dean with the county to do it, have Shelly do it while they're in. Okay. And just do it as a separate invoice. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have. Council? Mm. Man. Question. Um, you said you're going to take the rest of that flag pull down in front of CVS. Uh, the, we're going to yeah, we're going to pull the screw base out. Is that CVS's flag pole? That was. Or is that the six? That was Mr. Um, mm -hmm. Smart, right? Mm -hmm. no, was, um, Slanker. 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 Yeah, that was Mr. Slanker's uh, private pole that just so happens kind of grandfathered into the right of way. Okay. It went it all the way. We just kept it till it was gone. And I think we had contacted the insurance. Or I was with the decorative, and they have no, they don't they can't cover something that's private that was inside public right away. So we we're to remove it. I've had requests for it that I said I'd like to see a flag put back up, but at a different location where it's where we can manage it. Yeah. It was so nice looking down Main Street and seeing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was cool. It was nice. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Okay. Kitko. I truly appreciate it. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, for the fantastic report. And moving on to city manager report, our planning and zoning report, uh, Mr. Hutchinson is not available. So I'll kind of give a general overview of his report. Zoning, uh, 21 from its year to date, we had 66, 66 excuse me, received zoning applications and 65 approved zoning permits. Uh, code compliance, uh, six <coughs> right here. I'm not going to read all of them. Um, there's a lot. Uh, so we have that in there. If you want to see that, let me know. It's definitely on the packet on the website, too. Um, economic development slash community development tool, Living Center. Residents can now go to the city's website 
and view our available tool catalog and reserve tools. So if you don't want to come out there, just go to the website, do it all online, we'll get you taken up, we'll have the time for you to come pick it up. Uh, 210 Pike Street demo, asbestos was identified during the testing, currently waiting schedule for removal of asbestos. Uh, late Friday afternoon, I did execute the contract with uh, Levi Enterprises to go ahead and remove that as asbestos um, so that could be happening um, here relatively soon. And the contract was just as you know. Um, other updates, new code client truck has been delivered and in use. We got that, I think, last week. We went up. Um, basic white truck, we all get a, a letter uh, on the side of it to identify it as a new car while uh, vehicle. Uh, but thanks to the county for letting us buy that. It was much needed in love. Uh, continuing planning projects, GIS software installed, uh, and the software program they can make maps on is actually really cool. Um, New City Economic Developer is in the works. A uh, comp plan update that is currently going on a planning board review. Uh, City PD grant program, county partnership. Um, I don't know if I'll ask them about that. And then planning records organization is ongoing. And uh, code rewrites on planning and exterior property maintenance is ongoing. Uh, so definitely anything that deals with a comp plan update or the rewriting of the code takes a very long process, uh, but those are under the code instructor support. Um, I'll be happy to entertain any of the uh, questions regarding the planning department. Pike Street House, after it's demolished, does the property still belong to the owner? Um, that, I do believe, is a true statement. Okay. But there's, don't quote me on that. I should know that, and I think you might just think um, but we're just tearing down the vacant structure. The property itself is not a nuisance, so I would say yes, we're probably right. Thank you. Council, any other questions? Thank you, sir. Awesome. All right. Um, where am I at? Oh, my turn. All right, under informational items, special meeting request the week of August 23rd. Um, it says on the manager report it's a, to interview uh, Jason to, speak to the Charter Review Commission. His application is attached. However, I do need to add a second person on there. We did have a park and application, and I'll be very honest, I completely forgot to add it to this particular um, manager report. It's Joshua Mooney. He is requesting to be on the park and record. So we can set that meeting. Also, we would like to introduce the ordinance. It's going to be 2021 and that establishes the bond fee schedule for your mayor. I tried my best to get it done for this meeting. It's not. It's going to tax is tax paper. Uh, but we will have that. I will have that done if we introduce that on the week of the 23rd. And it will still be voted on as the same day as it is being introduced today. Um, so the motion for that, and we have the availability for the week of the 23rd. Monday. 23rd. Monday. Monday. Any yeah. certain time that works better for you and the, and the individuals, Mr. Baird, to be heard? Or? You know what? Uh, I, if it was just us, I would prefer it to be in the daytime. But since we have external applicants coming in, the main purpose is to interview them and get them appointed. Right. Maybe it should be in the evening. I know Mr. Mooney is a, a local coach here for the school district, so I don't know if that's going to have to impact on this schedule. I was going to say, I think he coaches well, high school golf. Yeah. Golf. Mm -hmm. Did you want to do so maybe like a 7 o'clock meeting, because I'm assuming they have practices right after school. I don't know if they have practice now that the season's starting or not. I, I have no idea. I, I don't know. I guess I should ask them Saturday. Excuse me. Same one going? Seven's fine with me. Are oh, we doing it on the actual 23rd? Yep. So yeah, moved. Monday. Motion by Mr. Weissner. Second. Second by Mr. Green. Okay, so 7 p.m. On the 23rd. On the 23rd. It was two. Who is it for? Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Green. All right, uh, Vice, I mean, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rosewald? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman, I mean, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Passes seven to zero for the special meeting. On August 23rd at 7 p.m., and the purpose is to uh, interview applicants for the Charter Review and Parks and Rec and introduce Ordinance 2021-36. And that will be here? Bob said what? Yes. I don't know. That's to be determined. What's that schedule? Give me 15 seconds. One. No, 20 because it's taken. Two. Five minutes to get a problem. Three. Yeah. 
four, five, <coughs> stay out of the county. They told me to speed up. Okay, on the 23rd, we have got, right now I'm seeing it's not ranked. Yep, we're open. Okay, so shelter house. Yep, shelter house, 7 p.m. All right. Make sure you whenever you're ready, sir. Mayor's court final legislation establishes a fine schedule, including court costs. And I just said will be introduced to special on the 23rd, and will be voted on the same day, which is Tuesday, September 7th. Liability insurance renewal submitted for proposal expected in October, November. Uh, we have a new cyber application um, that probably more than likely will have an impact on our potential premium costs. Um, we've been with USI for many years. They treat us fantastic. I have a really good relationship with our rep. We usually see decreases in our insurance liability, but I'm not sure with the new cyber stuff how that's going to come into play. If it does go up, just keep in mind that we have seen a series and many, many of reductions of those increases. So kind of nervous yet excited about that. Um, upcoming legislation for council, codification number updates, all these are in September. Uh, employees generally code up update. And then again, I have on here the opioid settlement, new information discussion. Again, what I said earlier, do you want me to rehash it for the record? Um, I'm going to recommend council let that ordinance die with due to the earmarking of it, us not having the staff, the amount that we're going to get, and how it's paid over the course of the years. Um, some fantastic news. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the Facebook post. I put it on my personal page and the city page. I'm sure other people shared it. Um, fantastic news. Um, about two weeks ago, we were named the second hottest housing market in the uh, healthiest housing market. So it's a matrix they use. A uh, few things that are on there, how long people stay in their house, how how quick does your home lose value, a few other things in there. Um, when the data came across, we were literally number two. Centerville was number one, Oakley was number five. We beat out some really nice, heavily affluent communities, not only in our region, but also in the northern, northern part of the state. Um, we have, to be honest with you, about four, five weeks prior to this being out, we have seen a uh, high very high increase in interest in building homes. Um, we couldn't figure out why. This hit, and now we know why. Um, Springfield last year was ranked number one. They saw a big boom because of that. So we are expecting some things off of this. We are working with some people now, so we're really releasing stuff. I told the council members where I work some big things to release, and we're definitely getting back off of this. So hats off to the citizens, hats off to everyone in this room, because to have that accomplishment and to have that free marketing and PR, we'll take it in a day. Mm -hmm. So hats off to everyone. So good, good news. Um, any questions on that before I move on to the next bullet point? No? Okay, so the, uh, I'm going to need an amendment before adoption. Um, so bear with me on this. Ordinance 2021-31, which is our grass is abatement. We need to remove 208 West Washington, 224, 234, and 911 at Leverwood and add them to 220 uh, ordinance. 2021-32, which is the nuisance abatement. So when we did the uh, legislation on this, we had a little confusion about over the grass abatement and a nuisance abatement. So we're doing taking away three from one and putting three on the other. So I'm not sure something we can just do now. So when we do the legislation, it's good to go. And then, you know, so. No, we'll probably do it with the we'll legislation. Let's do it that way. Okay. okay. Any questions on that? That was just a, 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 a clarifier. Yeah. No? Okay. Uh, water line replacement project, Mr. Kicko already went over that with council, but I did want to point that out uh, in the city ranch report when we came to this, we realized we already talked about it. If we have any discussions on that, we can pick it back up. It sounds like we're good to go and appreciate council's uh, receptiveness for that. And the last is just the ongoing project list. Uh, it, it has been updated. If you have any questions on that, just, just give, me a, give me a question or give me an email or a call and we'll take it from there. That's all I have for the city manager report. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm <coughs> Council, any questions or comments? Uh, I just had just one comment, Mr. Bridge, and this goes for you and Mr. Kitko and Ms. Harris and, and your whole team, to be honest. Just, I mean, over the past year or so, it seems like, you know, all of you guys have, have done a great job with getting your grants and, and, you know, really going the extra mile as far as going and reaching out for money. But, out there for us so you know thank you to all of you who's had a hand in that because it's it's made a big difference and you know the, the street lighting the, the water meters you know just everything you guys have worked hard to get to it's i mean it's really nice and, and it shows uh 
It just shows that you know we see a difference in town with all that stuff. So thank you very much, all of you. Well, we appreciate the uh, uh, recognition. Sure. Absolutely. So, anyways, thank you for the report and comments from the members of the public. Anybody has any questions? Please go to the podium. All right, we're moving on. Right. Committee for Sunday resolutions. Mr. Bird. Yes. Okay, so resolution. This is I just need it, right? Resolution yep, 2021 15R introduction tonight, public hearing action on 9 7 2021. That is a resolution adopting a capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. No, just action. Just, just to read. Just to read. Okay. Am I good to go on with the ordinance? Yes, sir. All right. So this is at action. So we have ordinance 2021-28 is introduced on 8 June 2021. An ordinance determining to proceed with the with the improvements of certain public improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of, New Car of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting. Okay, so moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Ms. Newell-Kelsey. All right, and we will start. Uh, Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Newell-Kelsey? Yes. Councilwoman Ace. Yes. Ordinance 2021-28 passes 7 to 0. Uh, moving on is Ordinance 2021-29, also introduced on August 2nd. That is an ordinance levying assessment for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kowski, second by Mr. Roper. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eagles? Yes. Councilman Rogwald? Yes. Councilwoman Nokowski? Yes. Yeah. Ordinance 2021-29 passes 7 to 0. Let me cut in for just a second. Okay. You okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cobb? You good? good? Yeah, okay, just making sure. Um, ordinance 2021-30, also introduced on August 2nd. That is an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax due potential to certain due delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. I'll move. Second. Okay. Did you get that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't explain So this... This ordinance, if someone did not pay a utility bill, and then we have to assess their thing, we send them to the office. So I'm paid for that. All right, so we go to the Councilman Grimm. Yes. Counts, uh, Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewall? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Nixon? Yes. yes. Uh, 7 to 0, Ordinance 2021-30. And we're going on to Ordinance 2021-31. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Ohio Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax due percent certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Council? No move. Second. Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rick. And an explanation of this ordinance, this will, if we went out and cut your grass or abated your property for high weeds or high grasses, and you didn't come in and pay within 10 days, this is where we accept that. And we will go with the vote count. Uh, Mayor Lauer. Is, yes. is this the one where we take off to a West Washington 224 to 230 or to 911 Leatherwood? You should be sitting in this seat. I move that we do that. Mm -hmm. and amend, the, and amend the ordinance by removing those addresses. Yeah, he's right. Well, I thought it was at the bottom. Mm -mm, he's right. Okay, so for this one, this is the weed. 
So basically, it would just be a motion to remove those addresses. Can you read them again for the record? I don't have it. 208, 208 West Washington, 224 to 230 North Drive, and 911 Leatherwood. Will be removed from the ordinance 2021 20, 30. 21 to it's going to be on the left side. Yeah. 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 Two twenty four to two thirty or drive and I'll see Nice catch. Fantastic. All right, so we can vote count on that. What was this what was the worth address? Two I we since we introduced them with an on there, they're they're in here today already corrected, so we didn't have to go back and redo it. So you don't need to redo it? Yeah, but I still need to vote because we introduced them how they were before. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you added the worth after you sent us this? If you look up 2020, 30, the corrections have already moved. Right, I got that. Yep. So 2020, 31 has already had the three out. You go to 32, I'm sorry. Yeah, 32, they're already added. Yeah, it's already moved. Well, 9-11 cover width is on 31. you looking for? 911 Leatherwood. It's still on the original, but maybe they got it for both. Okay. 131 removed West Washington North Drive 911 Leatherwood. That North Drive is not on 31, it's on 32. So that's where it should be. Yeah, that's where it So then we will be removing dual 208 West Washington and 911 Leather. Correct. Okay, so I need council to remove 208 West, 208 West, West Washington, Washington 911. and 911 11. Looks like the fourth one was somehow moved already. Okay, so this motion is just to remove 208 West Washington and 911 Leatherwood. Put on my motion to amend this ordinance. So let me rewrite that. 208 West Washington. Mr. Grimm and seconded by Ms. Hagerson. Grimm is one, Hagerson is two. All right. Claim Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Noah Calvin. Yes. Councilman Dodge. Yes. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. And Vice Mayor. Yes. And that passes 7 to 0. 
Now we're moving on to. Randy, you didn't have grammar. Didn't have so far, it's five. Didn't, you? Have, didn't have grammar. Oh, no, I didn't go back to my one to two. See, this is why I get flustered. Don't do this to me. <laughs> All right, so we'll finish the vote count with <laughs> Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman Jones. Yes. Seven to zero. Five. All right. Now we're moving on to 2021. That's their no, pass the motion. Mm -hmm. Pass the ordinance. That was okay. So now we're going on to. See, this is why you're <laughs> right here. Right here. Take me out of my misery. Stop there. All right, so this is for ordinance 2021 31 with the motion in the piece, right? Yes. Okay. Did I get a first? It's so already been. Yeah. Who was it? I don't remember who it was. I don't even remember. Uh, was it you? Do you want to make the motion? Sure. Some you want to make the second? second? There you go. Eggleston, no thousand. You know, in my head, this was such a, such a smooth process. <laughs> so I think you have a vacation on your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 136 for each council. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you hear that? Yeah. 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 Yes. That passes seven to zero. All right, so 2021-32, this should be a lot smoother. All right, so this is, is an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax due dependent. Certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with the real estate tax. So We need to do the motion for add. Or is that what that motion was for? That's to accept the ordinance. Then we do. Then we back to what how we did it last time. Then we do an There's amendment. No you Actually, have to amend the four times. The only if you look at that ordinance. You have the only thing you have on that ordinance right now is the ordinance. So you need to add you need to add more. Okay. You need to add. add. You Please make a motion to add. Accept the ordinance and then you amend the ordinance. Then you vote on the Once it's no, 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 you have to amend before amend you before Mr. That. Mayor, I move that we amend the ordinance 2021 32 by adding 208 West Washington and not the other by the way. Second. So first by Grim, Grim. Eggleston. Okay. A very Grim Eggleston. <laughs> Grim Eggleston. So Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman No Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes, we can. What you call? We'll be back next week. Thank God. <laughs> Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Uh, we'll go with Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. All right. So the uh, amendment passes. So we're going to add to it West Washington and 911 in Leatherwood. And now we'll go ahead with the actual passing of the ordinance. So moved. Nowakowski, Eggleston. Nowakowski, Eggleston. Man, am I the biggest fish out of water right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so we'll start voting with uh, Councilman Grimm. Yes. Uh, uh, Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rogal? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eagleson? Yes. Councilwoman Noah Council? Yes. Yeah. 7 to 0. All right. Remember this next time, you all want me to be back at Clerk of Council next year? Say no. Okay. Just all right. So, Ordinance 2021 35E. Um, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept the material terms of the One Ohio Subdivision Settlement pursuant to the One Ohio Memorandum of Understanding and consistent with the terms of the July 21, July 21, 2021 National Opioid Settlement and to sign the One Ohio Subdivision Participation Forms and declare an emergency. 
And it looks like that little ball came off the motion. Oh, wow. Before anybody got excited and said something. <laughs> We're done with the All right. Um, How about 2021? 20, yeah, do you want to do the read? Yeah, do the reads oh, of the. Uh, okay, so these are read only. They're introduced tonight under the Act on 9 7 2021. That is Ordinance 2021-33, an ordinance Starting author. Starting 348 Wyman Street. <laughs> Proceed to West Jefferson Street. <laughs> what a meeting. <laughs> Can we just delete the date and not wear it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Ordinance, <laughs> ordinance 2021-33, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a wood chipper. That would be voted on on Tuesday, September 7, 2021. Also, we have ordinance 2021-34, introduction tonight, public and hearing action on 9-7-2021. That is an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in the new Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-01. Awesome. Thank you, sir. We'll drop down to the business. Before we go on to item 13, uh, does anyone have anything else in your other business? I just have a couple of those. Mr. Cohen. Are you going to allow in the Heritage of Flight Festival the ones that are running for office to participate? Oh, yes. He just asked me that. We actually haven't discussed that in a meeting. So I'll uh, just, I'll, I'll call the parade coordinator tomorrow and I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. I don't see why not. I know they stopped at the last time. Why? I don't know. It's, it just it depends on how everybody feels. I don't like having the political election signs on a parade. It's, you know, it's a committee, so it's up to the group. So. I just had to ask. Yeah, no, no, we'll find out and let you guys know. Um, that's actually what I was going to mention now was uh, just an FYI. The festival is on this year unless something was to drastically change and we weren't allowed. We've got our contracts in place for rides and uh, entertainment, so I mean, we're pretty much in place. Well, we are doing fireworks this year on Saturday night at 10 o'clock, so that would be nice. We've got some sponsorships to, to put that on. It'll be, uh, uh, yeah, it'll be shooting them off at uh, behind uh, Friday, so right above the stage pretty much. So that should be a good event. So, Option. Do you want to finish the CIP now or finish it at the next meeting before we go on? Uh, council, what do you want to do? <laughs> okay. Is next meeting okay, Council? Next meeting. Okay. Sounds like next meeting. I like that. So, and then, um, yes. I did want to just say it was that we had our uh, second, uh, we had a, a second Gravity X competition. It was awesome. It was, uh, it was a good turnout. A lot of, the thing that really amazes me about the competition is how many older people show up just to watch it. Um, you know, because they don't skate, they don't have kids that skate. I mean, some of them do, but they, you know, uh, some of them just, they said they really enjoyed getting out and watching, watching these kids do these crazy tricks and stunts. So it was a good turnout. So <coughs> good, good, good event for our so, Mr. Kitko, thanks for uh, having some nuts and bolts down there. I appreciate it. Good, uh, good DJ, too. Yeah, the DJ did good. Yeah, he uh, volunteers his time for that. So, all right, Council, anything else before we move on to? Yes. Oh, good, Mr. Gunn. Community cleanup. Oh, yes. Oh, what'd you find? Um, I put a thing on Postbook. Uh, Postbook. <laughs> a post on Facebook um, soliciting volunteers, and I have about half a dozen people say they volunteer. Out of that, probably three of them will fall through. But somebody else made an interesting suggestion. Uh, tell people that they may need to assist in unloading their stuff themselves. I think with all of that going on, we could probably pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with it. I'll be there. And we should do it soon before the weather gets too icky. All it takes is just getting the dumpsters in. Um, so if you guys want to set a date um, on when you want to have it by, like what's the latest you want to have it and start there? Well, there was one Saturday in, I think it was September, that had... Uh, Ohio State playing a late game and Thank you. somebody <laughs> mentioned about the fact of having that one of their choices. Well, no, it wasn't. It was they play on Thursday, so it would be September 3rd. 
I know. I'm just saying. Not that I follow Ohio State schedules. Trust me, I don't. But he follows Michigan. Don't you dare say yeah. such monstrosities. So what's comfortable for you? Well, is it? Tell you what, can we start looking at some dumpster off the bin and get, take this back up on the seventh? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So I give Howie some at least because we it, it is a three week span between the next window. So at least have some information about what kind of dumpster. I mean, when we can get the dumpster and set up in there. I'm assuming if we have it before September go over, that's appropriate weather, right? You think? Yeah. I mean, even October would be fine. Um, I, mean, I don't want to put Howie in a bind without him talking to the dumpster people because I don't. Everything else is backed up. Yeah. You know I'm saying I don't want to okay. set a date and have to not right. be able to get the dumpsters. Well, let me ask a dumb question. I assume we're going to try and hold this up at the West Lake School. I think one of the big kickers are going to be the fact that you're going to be incurring on the um, contractor's part. If you do this on Saturday, he's probably going to end up paying overtime. If you put those dumpsters out there like Thursday, Friday, leave them till the following first of the week, your cost is going to be greatly reduced because of him not paying the overtime. I'll talk to Tony. He's always done good for us, um, except for the last two, well, two years ago, we used waste management. They helped us out, but they needed a little bit of time. Um, but I can talk and see what Tony Smith usually the only other one that can get the monstrous dumpsters out in a bunch. He usually took care of us with the Saturday removal um, and Friday drop off. So. Well, nothing else. We could probably possibly even remove them back down to the school if we had to do for a staging area. Move them to the school. Move them from West Lake to. Madison to get them out of there if necessary. I would think it's a more straightforward thing to do it out of Westlake. Mm -hmm. Open the gates on both ends and then turn around required. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Well, just do your research and your check-in and then just get back in. Ten I mean, they may be done with Madison School by that time and not even have the road in there anymore. Yeah. Ten to. Randy. Ohio State plays Rutgers at Rutgers on October 2nd, so Rutgers will have a night game just for this Rutgers. Ms. Yeah, did you have something? I just wanted to, um, it hasn't been announced, but it's at Rutgers, so Rutgers typically will uh, try to play that at night because yeah. we're talking good draw over here. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the passing of Ted Chapman. Um, he was a pillar of the city for many, many years. And it's a big loss for the city. Indeed. 99 years old. Ted spent many years on the fire division also, and I can't give you an exact number. Well, before we move on, Ms. Harris, I'm not going out on crickets like this. So, what kind of bedding does an accountant have? You're really gonna put me on this spot, isn't you? <coughs> Balance sheets. Balance. <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes. Oh my god, that's so bad. Dad. That was the first one I could Google without being obvious. <laughs> I All right, really Google finance jokes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, anyways, oh, moving on really. to executive session tonight to discuss the compensation of a public employee. And unless Mr. Bridge is aware of anything or counsel, as I don't foresee any other business taking place now. Second. Second. Motion by Ms. Eagleston, second by Mr. Grimm to go into executive session. Who was the first? I'm sorry, Grimm. Um, Peggy, then Mr. Jones. Yeah. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Um, Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yeah. Councilman Robol. Yes. 
Yep. Vice Mayor Cook. And then Councilman Grimm. Yes. And then Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Is that seven? All right. Uh, pass the seven to zero. Fine. Well, fine. Motion to go back into regular session. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Ms. Nowakowski. Go back into regular session. Eggleston, Nowakowski. Correct. Councilman Cox. Yes. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Yeah. Vice yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. 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 Mayor Lowry. Yes. Seven zero. Uh, Grim. <laughs> Said yes. Eggleston, Nowakowski, great. Awesome. So Seven zero. zero, we're adjourned at 842. No, no, no. I have a motion to adjourn. Horrible. We're adjourn. A motion by Mr. Grimm. Motion to adjourn. We got a motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston. Jeez, this is worse. Wait till Emily sees that. Ever, ever. All right, who's the first? Grimm. Grimm, Eggleston. Second. Yes. Cobb. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Seven zero. We're we are adjourned. Have a good evening. Bye.